everyone, today's training video, we're gonna go over how to load a skid steer. Check this out. Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna go over how to properly load a skid steer. Uh, first thing, I wanna thank uh, Precision Landscape in Hastings, Minnesota. They allowed us to use uh, their truck trailer and skid to do this. Um, as with all my videos, I tell people up front, I'm not an expert, not claiming to be. I've loaded lots of skids. I'm gonna show you kind of what I've learned. Uh, but I also, what I love about these videos is uh, we're gonna get comments below and people are gonna share their tips or tricks. So I'm gonna go over that with you. Um, now, today what we're loading, we're loading a John Deere 325. Uh, some of the things before you even start loading a skid steer is just your prep. Um, so there's a few key components there. Obviously your truck trailer and then knowing the skid, um, all those pieces. So first things first with your truck, uh, know what you're able to tow. Typically a skid steer, you're gonna be pushing eight to 10,000 pounds, uh, like pulling, sorry. Uh, so what that really means is you need to make sure they're very rarely gonna be able to, you're gonna have, have to have a heavy duty pickup or something larger to tow anything of that size. So understand that. Uh, we're running a Chevy uh, 3500. So those, this thing is rated up to 14,000 pounds. Uh, and then for our trailer, we're uh, doing a, uh, we have a flatbed here. It's got 7,000 pound axles, two of them. So it's got a 14,000 pound rated capacity. Um, so that's important to know because you obviously don't want to overload your truck or your trailer. Now with that, once you know those specs, you also need to know what equipment you're loading on there. Uh, the John Deere 325 we're loading is about 85 to 9,500 pounds. Really depends too on what accessories uh, we have on it. But you know, to play it safe, I'll say about 9,000 pounds. Uh, typically, most of those are going to fall underneath 10,000 pounds, which also defines some different regulations on how to properly secure it. So just understand all those. After you know all those, and if you don't know those, I always encourage you check the manual, check online, make sure you know those pieces. If you don't know those, any either of those three numbers and uh, you just don't know how to find, don't move any further forward. I mean, don't risk going any further forward. Those are probably your three basics you have to know before you get started. Uh, but beyond that, then we're talking about parking and getting ready to load. Uh, when you park any of these trailers, when you're trying to unload, flat. You gotta be on a flat surface. You don't ever wanna be at an incline. Now, I know that's ideal situation. You're gonna sometimes be sloped. All I will tell you is, uh, if I had to choose, me personally, my preference would be to have that uh, trailer parked up slope a little bit, so you're loading from the back. Couple things you'll see, there's probably videos on this. If you end up loading that down, and for some reason that, truck rolls at all you're gonna when you put downward pressure on the back of the trailer you're gonna potentially pick up the back of the truck it could roll forward and then you're going down that way because it's gonna drag the back of the trailer with your skid on it uh, I've seen that happen before and it's not a fun sight uh, the opposite is if you're up like this because your deck uh, your ramps are actually angled down like that Rarely will I, I've never seen a video of one going backwards with that because the skid's putting downward pressure on those ramps and it's angled down like that. So it's gonna kind of hold it from rolling backwards. So again, ideally flat is how you want it. But if you had to, if you have a slope at all, I would make sure that I was parked with that trailer angled up a little bit. Now, when you park it, this is probably gonna start a lot of discussion on how you, you know, whether it's in park, things like that. What I do, I put it in four wheel drive just so that transmission's engaged, I put it in park, and then you have to put the parking brake on. Uh, that's a no-brainer. Uh, so those are the essentials there. A lot of people don't put it in four-wheel drive. I, again, there's a lot of people that'll say different pieces on that. It, it, I don't know, it gives me a comfort level. No, it's in park and you've got, you know, all four engaged there. If it's just in two-wheel drive, you know, their rear axle, if that back end picks up. So that's why I always recommend that. Uh, you know, the safest way is if you have two people, and I've seen some other people advocate this for having someone in the cab and actually putting it in neutral and then putting your foot on the brake to hold the thing, uh, the truck from moving. That's probably the safest way and also doesn't put much strain on your transmission. I just don't know if that's really is very realistic. If, if it is, if you can do it, great. Uh, but I also don't think, I'm not one of those ones that thinks you put a lot of strain on your transmission if you load it right. You know, if you're not rocking that, that trailer really hard when you load and you're taking it easy, you're not putting that much uh, you know, pressure on that transmission being in park. So don't worry too much about that. Outside of that, once your truck is parked in park, uh, parking brake on, the next thing is you potentially could uh, chalk your wheels. Uh, today, again, I'm gonna show you what I do this is not, and this is, you know, different people have different strategy on this. If you wanna be really safe, chalk the wheels on your trailer. 
That way that trailer cannot move. It won't roll back or forth. Uh, that can be, you can get really excessive here. So I also try and be a little bit realistic on what you're gonna see out there. So if you can do it, great. Uh, if you can't, I don't think it's absolutely necessary, especially if you're on a flat ground there. So those are the pieces there just to get ready before we even do anything. Now let's go over and look at some of the, uh, what you're gonna need uh, to load, to secure this thing. Now typically we're loading, again, we know our weights already. Our skid steer is just under about 9,000 pounds. So there is federal regulations, and again, each state is gonna be different. The enforcement I've seen is different. Uh, there is uh, federal regulations, uh, it's 393. If you do 393.100, if you just Google 393.100, that is like the federal motor carrier standards, and it gives you all the regulations. Each state, though, can adopt or tweak it. So again, I'm not gonna say I know the law here exactly, and I don't want you taking that advice from me. I'm just gonna tell you, you know, kind of what I've done, what I've heard and seen. Now with that said, anything at 10,000 pounds, what you're loading, 10,000 pounds is kind of that magic number. And what I mean by that is if it's over 10,000 pounds, you're in a different kind of realm. You're in a different way to secure it. Uh, that's a heavy haul that is uh, different. Four points of contact are mandated. There's a lot of different regulations that go in. You're also probably gonna have to have a, a commercial driver's license to haul anything over 10,000 pounds. Generally, that's not gonna be the play for most landscapers hauling like a skid steer, mini excavator. Those are typically gonna fall under 10,000 pounds unless it's a really large skid steer. So we're gonna go over the under 10,000. Now under 10,000 pounds, Generally, there we're going to talk about points of contact, and I'm going to want to get the skid steer up there. We'll, we'll show you. Uh, you are fine. Two points of contact is what that's the absolute minimum. That would be a front and back chain. Typically, the, the if you look at those federal regulations, it is going to be two points of contact if it's under 10,000 pounds, and anything over 10 feet in length that you're securing, you add another point of contact. Now our skid steers typically, I'd say are around 10 feet, almost exactly, maybe 10 to 12 if you're counting the bucket. So you could go to three. Four is gonna be, I don't wanna say excessive, because by all means, do four points on each corners. No, you're, you're gonna be the safest there, but it also may not be the most realistic. So I always recommend having at, you're gonna have to have two. We're probably gonna do, we'll do three points today just to kind of show you that. Now, with the chain and the binder, you're using binder chain here. So two pieces here. So know your chain, know the ratings on it. Typically the way the ratings on these work, um, if you're, you add these up, you're combined, it's half of whatever the load limit all these. So if you have, let's say these chains are all about, I think uh, about 6,000 pounds load limit. You multiply, if you're gonna have four of those, four points on there, that would be 24,000 and then you'd half that. So you'd have a 12,000 pound limit on what you can, whatever you're hauling there. So that's what, these are three eighths. And again, those are typically 6,000. They will generally be marked. The big thing on binder chain two I've seen with new people, uh, understand the binders, they go like that. They do not go, I saw a new operator, new guy loading, try and do this once through the center. That's a no, no, don't do that. It's gonna get stuck in there and that's not how they're supposed to be. They bind like that, they go around the latch. So that's how you do a binder chain, okay? Sometimes if you don't have a binder hook on there, that's a, that's a little different scenario. Sometimes you'll see a bigger hook, which I don't have one on here, uh, but typically those are the binder hooks. They'll look like that and they binder just like that on there. Now, if you, we use these chains on this truck, so we know the limits on these ones. You'll see an official, a really official one will actually have a tag. It'll be tagged on there and it'll tell you exactly. So this one actually says 6,600 pounds. It is a 3 8 inch, 20 feet long. So sometimes you'll see that on uh, the heavy haul guys. And I think the DOT obviously would love to see a, a chain tagged. I think they want that. I don't think that's realistic. I, I haven't seen this very often where they're gonna be tagged like that. If you have it, great. But just understand the limits of your chains. No, and on that federal guidelines, it'll tell you too what the limits are of each chain. So those are your binder chains. And then you've got two different connectors on how to attach it. So a ratchet binder is probably the, the best. This is what I would jet and recommend, this is what we're gonna to use today. And I always, it's all about the prep ahead of time. So usually you wanna loosen these up. So you'll see I almost have all the threads there. Have it prepped before you hook it up. So what you'll see later is I've already prepped these. If these are already tightened up and I didn't loosen them from the last time, you get that thing on there, you're doing all the work to binder them, well then you run out of room to tighten them. So that's why it's important to make sure you prep these, open them up all the way. 
This is a lever binder. I brought this just to show, but I absolutely despise these things. Uh, these are another form. They, I guess you could call them easier because they're just one. All you do is binder them like that. Uh, you kind of use that lever. I think they're more dangerous because they can pop open um, when you're loosening and things like that. Generally, you'll have a pipe or something on there uh, to tighten it. However, that is, you got to be extremely careful when you're using that pipe. It's a, dangerous because it can flip open, things like that. Uh, and also, I think the federal regulations say you actually can't use a pipe. You have to do it by hand, which to me is crazy because I, I don't even think I can get enough tension on this by hand. I don't care how strong you are. So this is another one. I don't recommend it. If you can, get the ratchets. They're going to be a lot better for you. So with that, we've got the chain. When we start securing that, I'll show you, but uh, on your, you're going to have a rail on your trailer. Generally, what I always recommend anytime you're attaching these is you're putting them through the pockets. So you'll see there's pockets on here. And then you come up and around. And you're doing that. You're doing a U to kind of pull down on that. That, to me, is the proper way. You also want to try and keep it. You don't want to put it on the outside or anything like that where it could get the chain could get struck on the outside. That's why it's got a rail here to protect it but you generally want to have it on the inside there. This also allows, the reason I like this too, it keeps it from coming loose when you're uh, loading. So if I put it up like this, if this thing slips or something, it's just a pain in the butt to re-tighten. So make sure you have that hanging down because it's just gonna keep it tight on there, okay? Okay, I've got all my chains ready. I've got the trailer ready. Now let's go back to the skid steer and back to the back of the trailer. So on this trailer, we got our two ramps. I have one down already. Uh, again, there's different configurations on this. We kind of have this dovetail where it comes down the, the ramps. The key here is these have supports built in. So when I put this down, this is gonna keep this, uh, the trailer, it's gonna keep it from pushing the front of it, the tongue up, okay? Now, if you don't have that, a lot of times other, uh, if it's not a deck height uh, over the axles like that, there's options to put jacks on there that you can actually put down. It's very, very, very important to have some support. Worst case scenario, if you don't have jacks, if you don't have ramps like this, I have used blocks of wood or something to put underneath just to keep, because when you see it, when I'm putting eight, 9,000 pounds on the end of this trailer, it's gonna wanna pop up the tongue. And that's why it's important to have something on there to help support it. So these are pretty simple. So these ones can slide. Uh, most of them will. I usually, you'll see when I come up, I try and line it up. So it's roughly a skid steer, especially a track machine. Uh, they have a pretty wide footprint there, but you just want to make sure that you're hitting roughly the center of those in there. So you'll see those are down, they're secure, they're make sure they're attached. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and get in the skid steer. Okay, now that I'm in it, again, I'm not going to go over, this is not a how to operate a skid steer. So that's a separate video we have on our channel. You will notice I'm putting on my seatbelt. I can't stress that enough, um, especially in loading. Make sure you have your seatbelt on. I know a lot of operators won't do it, but you just want to be better safe than sorry on this. Okay, now that we're ready to go. So again, I'm gonna, once I raise and I get closer here, I kind of raise it up so I can see my tracks and I pull forward and I just make sure So I can see both sides there. Once I know I'm lined up, then I'm good. Now we're gonna talk about where to load. Obviously on that double axle, you wanna make sure you're putting more tongue weight on the front. It, they recommend you want about 10 to 15% of your total weight on the tongue. Uh, so I'm gonna show you both scenarios here. But with this, it's just going really, really gently. I like to go forward onto these uh, because I like the, again, it really depends on your weight on how it's distributed. Obviously the lot, most of the weight's in the back with a skid steer. You do, if you have a, if I didn't have a bucket on this or anything on the front, I would definitely back it on. You have the risk of rolling this thing if you don't have that weight up there. But with a bucket or attachment, I like to go on forward again. There is no right or wrong there. So I'm just gonna show you that, but you raise the bucket up a little bit. Obviously you don't wanna be scraping this thing. I'm watching both. And then you just make contacts, nice and slow. Now, as I'm going up here, this is where I can lower that. Remember, low and tight. We want to be low to the ground, so that's where I'm lowering my bucket down. Now I'm going to get to a point in a track machine here where it's going to kind of drop. That's where it's nice and slow. 
Don't do anything really fast here. Because eventually it's going to drop like that. And hopefully it's nice and gentle. You saw sometimes I'll move my hand up there, kind of hold on as well. But now that I'm over the edge, now I'm just kind of looking for positioning. I can raise it up a little bit so I can see better and see where I'm placed on the machine on the trailer. And if you don't like it, like right now I feel like I'm off just a little bit, I can make some subtle little adjustments there. Now generally if you're using the same trailer, you're probably gonna know your mark, but I'm gonna show you a few different scenarios here. Uh, I'm gonna park it, let's go a little bit forward. And I'm gonna get out and kind of show you so if I go too far forward, you're gonna see the back of that pickup. I mean, it's got way too much tongue weight. It's not good on the truck at all. Uh, it's just not safe. You're not using the two axles there to kind of distribute that weight. So that's gonna be too far. And, and the way I'll look at it a lot of times is the axles, the double axles. You can kind of see the distance between the fender and the tire. So this would be too far forward. You most likely can see that from outside. I'm going to back up to what's the appropriate. And a lot of times after you do this for a while, you're just going to see kind of the sink in your truck. I'm going to say there. Put that bucket flat then. I'm going to leave it running. I'm going to get out and I'm going to show you some things from the outside. And then we'll get back in to show you a little bit more. So that was my first and I just got out. This is roughly where placement's going to be, but some things I look at, you're kind of without, with the tongue weight, again, 10 to 15% of your total load should be on that. So if I'm looking at, it's about a 9,000 pound machine, uh, we'll add another, what, 3,000 for the uh, trailer about, three to 4,000. So you're looking, I should have uh, roughly out of that, maybe 1,000 pounds or so, 1,000 to 1,500 pounds tongue weight on there. So you're going to want a little bit. That's where you need to be. Uh, if you're too uh, heavy, it's just not good on the, on the truck and everything like that. You're loading too much, you overload that. There's going to be a rated capacity on your tongue, uh, how much you can hold on that truck. And then you don't want to be too far back. A lot of times what you can look at is distance too. If you have a, not, this is a deck over, but sometimes when you've got fenders up there, you can look at the distance between the fenders and the top of the tire. Now the key here, uh, and this is why I got out, I'm going to pick up my ramps in the back. I've made this mistake myself, is you get it, oh, it looks great and everything, I tie it down, and then, oh crap, I left my jacks down. Uh, if your jacks are holding up the back there, obviously you're not getting a true idea of what that's doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the ramps in the back. Now that I know I've got nothing in the back, I'll kind of show you from a distance what it looks like if it's too far forward or too far back. You can already see, I can tell just looking at it right now, I don't have nearly enough tongue weight on the front. You can, I can see how it's pitching up a little bit. So I'm gonna make a few minor adjustments. So you'll see if I back up here, you can see how I'm already, I'm picking up the back of that trailer. Uh, so that's bad. This is how you get that death wobble when you're driving, where the whole back fishtails like that. Very, very, very bad situation. And then I showed you kind of already the forward where I was down. So I'm gonna go forward and I know roughly again always err on the side of forward if you have to so I feel good with this I'm gonna get out and do before I start tying it down and do one final but I feel pretty good on where the lineup is at this point okay now that we got it loaded I'm gonna show you uh, well two ways to tie it down uh, one is, I would say, not necessarily, well, I, there's just some, a lot of gray area in how we attach it. Uh, we are going to do, I'm going to do three tie downs on this. Again, technically you only require two. Now there is a way that you can use the machine to, if you want to make this a much quicker load, is the front two you can actually tie down, and then all you have to do is just back the machine up to pull it tight. Okay, folks, time out here. If you're watching this video and we use this piece, it's because we did this video shoot on another day. Uh, and part of it is I want to do a, we want to do a redo. I don't, we proposed one, a different option of securing the skid on the front by put, hooking the chains up and then backing the machine up. 
we did some more research on that and it's just not it doesn't meet regulations it very clearly states in some of those federal regulations it's got to be an adjustable it's got to be something that a driver can get out and tighten down uh, so that's one I just don't think it's something that I want to show you guys as a method and, and we'll we can add some video here seeing it in action but I would not support it I think you have to have a tightening device uh, on every one of those points Okay, so now I'm going to show how putting two binders uh, ratchets on the front two corners doing that. So as I just barely get it tight, I'm just making sure, again, these are all on there all the way. And you don't want to tighten it all the way down yet. Okay, after both of those, then we're gonna go to the back and do the back. So it's the same chain I had fed through before. I just had loosened it up, pull it tight. Okay, so after that one's done, tie that, we're secure in the back, and I'm gonna go up and re-tighten the front. If you do have little excess like that, you know, you still wanna tie it up so it doesn't bang around anything. Okay, now we're gonna unload it real quick. Okay. So now we're talking about taking off the trailer, I've unhooked it. Uh, if you have a spotter, I definitely recommend having someone behind you just with visibility. This uh, skid, we have a backup camera on here. Uh, it's got pretty good visibility, but it's always nice to have a spotter in there. So the biggest thing here is don't panic. I almost seatbelt on. Again, anytime you're moving these, especially from that height, make sure you have a seatbelt on just in case. So we're good to go. I've got that off. I'm keeping the bucket relatively. I like to take my extra hand because I'm doing all my driving with just my left, put it up here. I'm waiting, I'm going to feel this thing break. Again, a, a skid steer, a track skid steer is going to rock over. So I'm going really, really slow. The key is not to panic because if I push forward, that's where you could get in trouble here and roll this. My ramps usually are going to bow up a little bit in the back here. I can feel it right there and I'm going to go right about here. I can feel it teeter tottering. So then I'm just going to go nice and slow. And if you have to stop and pause for a second, and then I'm gonna keep bringing it down. I'm looking out my sides. I'm gonna feel another one as I go on the ramps here. 
little tilt there. And eventually, once I feel myself down on the ground, this is where my hand is gonna go to my, bring that bucket back up so I don't scrape. There you go, off the ramp. Okay, everyone, that's how to loan, unloan and skid steer. Again, uh, probably the first video we've done with that, so it's probably a little bit longer. Uh, we'll try and make that into smaller pieces, but I, again, I wanna hear comments from you. Share your tips and tricks. Uh, by no means am I an expert. Uh, I just like to kind of show what I've learned, and I'd like to hear from you. So thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.